Okay, here's some problems involving a normal distribution, or i.e. a normal curve. So sketch a normal distribution that has a mu of 14 points percent, which remember is mean, and a sigma, which is standard deviation of 5%. And this is actually the same data as the MMM's data that we used in class earlier this week. Um, and then once we get that, we can answer questions like what percentage of bags have fewer than 19% yellow candies or more than 4% and greater than 10% or fewer than 17%. So let's start by sketching the curve. So I'm going to draw a normal curve. And the mean is 14%, so I'll put that in the middle. Put it as a decimal, I guess. And two standard deviations to the right, two standard deviations to the left. I should be able to calculate these. So 0 0.19, 0 0.24, going to the left would be 0 0.09 and 0 0.05. And now I can actually start to answer these questions. Okay, so here's the normal curve set up for the M&M's yellow candies. And the question is, what percentage was greater than 19%? So once I get the curve, I can actually start shading in the region that I'm looking for, which is this region here and answer that question. Now that's when I have to do a little work here because I need this region to the right of that and I know from the empirical rule that 68% of the data is from one standard deviation below to one standard deviation above. So if you realize that leaves 32% outside so to get this region I could go 100 minus 68, that's the 32, and divide it by 2 since I only want the right hand tail and that gives me 16%. And so that's the region, the percentage of yellow MMs I would expect to be above 0 0.19. So for the question about more than 4%, that would be this region all the way from here to here. So to calculate this, probably the easiest way to do this is to realize that 95% of the data is between two standard deviations from the, below the mean to above the mean. And since I'm looking at the region to the right of that, it's 95% plus this little tail. And since what's left over is 5%, if I divide that by 2, I'll get 2.5%. So 95% plus 2.5% could give me a total answer of 97.5%. So again, I can use the empirical rule to actually calculate just about any region in there, as long as the values that they give me occur right on one of the standard deviations. Okay, right exactly one standard deviation above or one standard deviation below, or two standard deviations above, two standard deviations below. The question comes, well, what if the question was, what is the probability of getting more than 10%? Well, 10%, if you notice, is right here. And it doesn't occur right on one of those nice little lines. So I do not know the exact percentage there. So this requires us to look at a different way of solving these problems. I can't use the empirical rule because the percentages are not given to me. So in that scenario, we're going to use what's called a z-score. A z-score is a way to standardize any kind of um, standard deviation score. And you need to add this to your notes. But this is the z-score formula. It's x minus a mean divided by standard deviation. And it's also um, it's a standardized score. We call this the z-score. So for example, if Jenny earned an 86 on her test, the class mean was 80, and the standard deviation was 6.07, what would her standardized score be? Well, x would be her score, so 86 minus the mean, which was 80, divided by 6.07. And that comes out to be 0 0.99. So that means that she was 0 0.99 standard deviations above the mean. Not quite one standard deviation, very, very close, but very, um, but 0 0.99. Basically what we're doing is converting this to a normal distribution in which the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. So if I were to create this bell curve, the mean would be 0, the standard deviation would be 1, and so this little graph helps me determine what a z-score measures. And z-score tells me where on this bell curve a particular score would occur in regards to the given mean and standard deviation. So you notice here the notation here, 
for a normal curve with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So we can use these scores to compare. So here, remember Jenny, who scored 86 on her stats test? Remember, she had a standard deviation of 0 0.99. Well, she goes in to take a chemistry test. She scores 82 on their chemistry test, but the mean was only 76 there with a standard deviation of 4. So the question was, which one did she perform better on relative to the rest of their class? So I'm going to calculate her z-score of her chemistry test. So that is 82 minus the mean, which is 76, divided by 4. And that comes out to be 1.5. So she has a z-score equal to 1.5. So if you notice here, she even though she didn't do as well um, grade-wise on her chemistry test, she actually scored better in relationship to the rest of the class because her z-score was 1.5, which means she was one and a half standard deviations above the mean in comparison to her stats test, which she was just a little bit under one standard deviation above the mean. So in reality, she actually did better on her chemistry test than she did in her stats test when she compares to the rest of her class. So given a normal curve that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, a z-score helps us standardize any mean or standard deviation situation. And we can actually then use Table A, which is in the front cover of your textbook, to actually find the percentage of the curve that's to the left of Z. Very important that you remember it's to the left of Z, because sometimes it's a little bit tricky when we go to solve problems. So, But let's learn how to use Table A. So let's say we wanted to find the proportion of observations that are 0.81, that have a normal... I'm sorry, that are 0.1 standard deviations below the mean. So we look on the table, and we go down to 0.8 column, I'm sorry, 0.8 row, and then because it's 0.81, we look for the 0.01 column, and so you can see here that the percentages below 0.81 is 0.791, so about 79% of the data would be to the left of where the mark would be for 0.81 standard deviations above the mean. And so here you can see you have a picture here, pull this up a little bit, you have a picture here that represents exactly what that is. So the z-score of 0.81 would be just to the left of 1, and the idea is that this area here would be 0.81% of, or 81% of the curve. So one of the questions that won't be asked a lot is to find the uh, um, proportion of observations between two values, between negative 1.25 and 0 0.81. So if I were to draw this bell curve again, where the mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 1, I would get something like this. And I would be negative 1.25, which would be about here somewhere, and 0.81, which would be about here, and they're asking for the region that's in between them. As you can see here, this doesn't ex land exactly on those nice standard deviation lines, so I can't use the empirical rule. So what i got to do here is actually use the z-scores to calculate this answer. For a z-score of 0.81, remember we found out that, that was about 79%. That was from the previous score. So now I'm going to do the same thing for negative 1. Point, negative 1 1.25. So if I look at the table A in the book, which is on the front side is all the negative values, the back side is where the positive values. But since negative 1.25 is on the front, I'm going to look at well, the z-score of negative 1.2, go across to column 0.05, and that percentage comes out to be about 10.5%. So the idea is that there'd be 10.5% to the left of that, but I actually want to the right of that. I want to go from negative 1.25 to 0 0.81. So I actually got to subtract these. So 79 minus 10.5 is 68.5%. So 68.5% of our bell curve would be between negative 1.25 and 0 0.81. Make sure you look in the book to see how I got the value 10.5%. And actually remind yourself how I got the 79%. So these are some notes on how to calculate normal distributions. For, um, these four steps are something that we're going to use a lot this year. State, plan, do, and conclude. State, we're going to express the problem. Um, plan, we're going to draw a picture and shade the region that we're looking for. Do, we're going to actually calculate the z-score and use table A to calculate the percentages that are necessary and conclude, we're going to write the conclusion in the context of the problem. So remember, state, plan, do, and conclude. If you remember, Spanish people do the uh, dance the cha-cha. 
So here's the situation involving Tiger Woods. He hits the ball that is descri um, described by a normal curve, and which his mean is 304 and his standard deviation is 8. So you notice here I created a bell curve where the mean was 304 and the standard deviation going to the right was 8 and to the left was also 8. So it says what percent of the Tiger's drives travel between 305 and 325 yards? So I want the region between 305 and 325. Okay, so first thing I gotta do is figure out what is the z-score for both of that. So when x equals 305, I'm gonna go 305 minus the mean, which is 304, divided by the standard deviation, which is 8. And that z-score comes out to be 0 0.125. When x is 325, then I'm gonna go 325 minus 304, Again, divided by 8, and that comes out to 2.625. Okay, so about 2.6. Okay, so now I've got to calculate what percentage of the data is in between those two values. Here's my z score 2.63, rounded off, and 0 0.13. And I want to find the region in between there. So here's the normal curve that represents the region in between here. So I'm using table A, and I find out to the left of 0, 2.63 is 0.9957. And for 0 0.13, it's 0 0.5517. So I subtract there, and that comes out to be about 44% of Tiger's drives travel between 305 and 325 yards. So I don't need the, all these bell curves, but I do need to draw this one showing the region in between those two z-scores. So this is the z-score as a formula. And if the z comes out to be negative, that means your uh, value that you're looking at is below the mean. And if your z comes out positive, it means it's above the mean. And it's x minus the mean, which is mu, divided by sigma, which is a standard deviation. This is a formula that you may become very familiar with. I would add to your composition notebook as a way to determine where values are either above or below the mean. We always use table A to determine the percentage. So let's go back to our original question. What percentage of M&Ms have greater than 10% or less than 17%? And what about the ones between 12 and 18%? So we can draw the bell curve just like we did with the Tiger Woods problem and shade in the region that we're looking for. Or there is a norm, what's called the normal CDF function, which will do the same thing without having to use the table. And I'd highly recommend getting um, a very acclimated with this function so that you can do this without having to, to use the table. You still have to draw the bell curve, but at least it doesn't require you to interpret percentages from the table. To do this on the Inspire, you hit um, Menu, like on your scratchpad, hit Menu, go to Statistics, distributions and then once you see the distributions look for normal CDF which will be choice two. You'll see a window pop up that looks something like this and for the question about greater than 10 percent the lower bound would be 0 0.1 so if I were to draw the normal curve here I would see the region would be so a reminder of the bell curve that we're applying here so remember the mean was 0 0.14 and the standard deviation was 0 0.05. So for 0 0.110, that would be just to the right of 0 0.09, and we wanted the region to the right of this. So if I look at this curve, you can see that the region starts at 0 0.10. The upper bound is actually we write infinity, meaning it goes on forever to the right, and you find the infinity button on the Inspire by going to the Pi button, which is down in the lower left-hand corner. And when you hit that button, you will see a window pop up, and you can pick the pi, uh, infinity button. So we want to go to the right, and we put our mean and standard deviation in there. And this will give us the percentage to the right of 0 0.10. For the problem involved by being less than 0 0.17, I would draw a similar bell curve where my mean was 0 0.14 and my standard deviation was 0 was 0 0.05 so now in this case I want to go to the left of 0 0.17 so that would be about there and I'm going to shade to the left so again my lower bound in this case would be all the way to the left so we put negative infinity up 
with the negative sign, go to the pi button, find the infinity, up to 0 0.7, and I keep the mean and standard deviation all the same. Okay, so for this problem, between 0 0.12 and 0 0.18, I would not need to find, again, that region in my curve. So 0 0.12 would be about there somewhere, and 0 0.18 would be about there. And I would shade that region in between. And then I would type this into the normal CDF feature. Lower bound would be 0 0.12, upper bound would be 0 0.18, and again, our mean is 0 0.14, and standard deviation is 0 0.05. So you can, you can see this is what the calculator types onto your home screen. So for the first problem where I want to be above 10%, you can see that the percentage is 78%, approximately or 79%. For below 17%, so the percentage of yellow M&Ms that was below 17%, we would expect that to occur 72.5% of the time. And between 12 and 18%, we would expect that to occur 44%. So become very familiar with how to do a normal CDF with C scores. It does save you in looking at the table. And because it's accepted on the AP exam, I highly recommend using this feature of the calculator.